Hello everybody. Today we are going to be creating a Node.js server that uses uh, JSON web tokens. So we're actually just going to create the API portion of it. Should only take a few minutes. And let's get started. So uh, you have to forgive my microphone. It's makes my keys sound really loud. So <laughs> alright, so hey. let's just init here. And we're going to install two packages, Express and JSON Web Token. Once that's installed, let's create an index.js. And I've copied a little bit of starter code here, so I don't have to type it all out. Basically, all we're doing is creating a new Express app. And I'm going to create a API endpoint. All right, so there's our API endpoint. I'm gonna use Nodemon just to watch everything. And let's go check it out here. Great, our API is working. Cool, the next thing we're gonna do is create a protected route. So we'll say API slash protected. And this is going to, uh, for now it's just gonna Return some JSON, just so we know it's there. This is protected. Let's save that. Protected, great. All right, and we're gonna create one more route, and it's gonna be our API slash login route. And here's where we're gonna start doing some more interesting things. So normally what I would do is look, have you know uh, the body parser and look for form data like the username and password. We're gonna fake it and just pretend that happened. So here's where we would auth our user. Instead I'm just gonna fake a user. Now that we have our user, I'm gonna create a new JSON web token. So let's import our JWT library. And we'll say JWT, let's say uh, token equals JWT sign, and we'll put the user in there. We'll use the ES6 syntax there, and let's put a secret key. Normally, you would store the secret key in an environment variable. For now, it's kind of doesn't matter. And whenever we log in, instead of returning the the user like I normally would, I'm actually just going to return the token. All right, so we have three routes now. With the post, we can actually test with our browser. So we're gonna go over to Postman and we're gonna to post to API login. You can see now we get back a token, which is great. So now what we need to do is protect our protected route. So let's make it fail first. Our protected route, we're gonna to need to have some middleware, which goes and uh, checks that we have a token. So let's call this middleware uh, ensure token. I'll go down here. Of course, normally we would put this in new files, but that's not the point of this. And I'm going to cheat and copy some stuff up here. You can find this in my blog. Um, what this is doing is just looking at the authorization header, seeing if it exists, splitting it on a space, the value of it and then getting the first thing, which should be the token. And the important bit is it's putting it right here on the request as a, as a, uh, as a token um, object. So we can now ensure that our token exists. So if we save this and we come back to Postman, we try to post, or sorry, we try to get a protected route. We still get this as protected. I'm sending an authorization header. Let's uh, hit send and it is forbidden. I'm not sending any of these headers, so let's kill this actually. Just to prove it, let's go back to the browser, make sure protected. Okay, we're forbidden. So 
The reason we're forbidden isn't because we have the wrong token, it's because there is no token. So it's just hitting this 403. So we want to actually make sure that we protect our actual route from it. So um, we will say rec, sorry, so jwt.verify. That's going to help us verify a token. Here we probably check if there was a token, but it's being checked down here, and we're not super worried about that right now. So I'm going to verify the rec.token, and I'm going to pass in my secret key. And I'm going to pass the handler here to make it async. And we're going to wait for an error or the actual data or the payload that's attached to the JWT. So if there's an error, I'm just going to respond with, um, I got four or three. Otherwise, what we're going to do is take this stuff, keep it in here, and we'll, we'll respond with the actual protected thing. And let's go ahead and respond with the actual data that's returned. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's save that. Let's go back to Postman and let's post to API slash plugin. We're not posting a body. We're posting a body, but we're not even listening for it, so it doesn't matter. All right, send. So we've got our token. So let's take this. Let's now go to our get protected routes. Make sure we have no headers. Send. Still forbidden. Headers. We'll add authorization. And we'll say bearer. Paste in the token and send. And now we get our data. Now, if we change this token, you'll see we're forbidden again. Change it back, and we're good. Also, if we go, if we change our secret key. Let's try to decrypt it with some other key. And we save it, and we try to come here. We're also forbidden, which is great. Cool. And um, so, what you can do here too is once you have this uh, this data. You can use it to, you know, query the database or check for permissions or do whatever you need to do. Um, but as you can see, that took like five minutes to create. Um, and we have JSON tokens. The next step, of course, on the on the front end would be to actually send using a password, actually authenticate, only send a token if they're authenticated, and then you know store my secret in a in an environment variable, and you're pretty much set. Don't forget to store that. JWT in local storage somewhere. So every time you send a request, make sure you send in that authorization header. And if you send in that token, you'll be authenticated for as long as you've set the expiration for the token, which by default there is none, um, at least in this library. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.